Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. Anybody ready for the word of the Lord? I've spent some really cool time with God while I was gone. Deborah, yes, but whew, the time with God was good. You know, when you spend time with God, it, I promise you it just gets better and better and better. And wonderful things come out and expressions. And there's so many of them, I don't know which one to start with, but I started with one tonight that I thought was really cool. And I would like to get down on my knees and pray because let me tell you the truth. I've been doing this a lot of years since we were kids and I could easily just preach the gospel. But it's no good when a man just preaches or a woman just preaches the gospel. There's got to be the anointing of God, which is God taking the words and placing them in your heart. Without that, doesn't matter how cool the person is, no matter how old they are, they've been along, how long they've been around, doesn't matter how smart they are, how many verses they know, doesn't matter any of that stuff. What only matters is when the things of God go into the heart of the people. Without that, nothing works. And I humbly go before the Lord each time that I'm in the pulpit and I bend my knee in full recognition, knowing that this service, this church, and nothing will ever be accomplished without Jesus Christ being the first and most important of everything. And we have not, never will, in this church come to hear from a man. We come to hear from the Spirit of the Lord. And God wants to speak to you. So come on, stand to your feet, and let's go before the Lord. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you all the praise, glory, and all the honor. We thank you, Father, that tonight... The teacher of the church is not a man or a woman. The teacher of the church is the Holy Spirit. So welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us, heal us, strengthen us, encourage us, guide us, guard us, direct us and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise, give you the glory, give you all the honor. We love you, Lord. That's why we're here tonight. We're committed, Lord. That's why we're here tonight. Yes, we're different than the rest of the world, but that's a shame for them, not for us, because we're doing what you would have us to do and be in your presence. Bless all the churches that are out there preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, with a great big shout, we all say, Amen. Amen is right. Well, if you've got your Bibles, go with me, if you will, into 1 Samuel. You know, I'm one of those Old Testament guys that just love the Old Testament. This is really an important message that God spoke to me a lot. I stared off into space a lot during this time when God was speaking to me. It's kind of an interesting thing. Before we get into the message, I just want to ask you a question. What would it be like if I could share something with you that would help you to hear from God better than you've ever heard from God? You know, you want God to speak to you. You have business decisions and school decisions and family decisions. You hope you're making the right choices. You want God to speak to you and you know it. What if I could share something with you tonight that would help you to see God in every situation, sometimes under the pressures of life, and turmoil of existence, around the hustle bustle of people, we forget oftentimes how great God is. What if we could see God? As soon as you saw God in the midst of that problem, you wouldn't have a problem anymore. The very moment you spot him, the very moment you sense his presence, you wouldn't have any problems anymore. So what if I could get you to see and hear a whole lot better? What if I could get you to appreciate the greatness of God tonight? What if I could share some principles with you from the word of the Lord that get you not only to appreciate him, but to help build you stronger so when all hell comes against you, and I promise you, saints of God, listen to me now, all hell wants to come against you, all hell wants to stop you. 
They already lost you to heaven. They can't stop you from going to heaven, but they can sure try to stop you from being any kind of a witness on this planet and making you miserable and down and out so no one wants to follow in your path. Well, what if I could share with you some easy, simple principles? Would you be interested in it tonight? Hearing from God, seeing from God, appreciating God, building yourself up so strong that you're not blown away when harsh problems come at you. All from the word of the Lord, because God cares about you and God loves you so amazingly. He's filled his heart with you and your concerns, and all he wants for you is your benefit and blessings, and therefore he gives us the outline of how to live life by the word of God. If we just draw it and operate in it, we'll get blessed. If we don't, we don't. We end up miserable down and out. I was reading the scripture here. If you will, is a time when the great prophet Samuel is talking to Israel. Saul is going to be anointed the first king over Israel, and he's explaining the process to the people in the first Samuel, the twelfth chapter. And he makes a statement as he's explaining something to the people <clears throat> that just caught my eye and ought to catch your eye, but I'll help you to see it in a moment as I read it. He says something fabulous. He says now in verse number seven, he says these words, now therefore, and I love the two next words, stand still that I might reason with you before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts, the Lord in which he did for you and your fathers. And when I was reading that, the word stand still jumped out. While you're there in the 12th chapter, just go on down to the 16th verse. Again, it says these words. Now, therefore, stand and see the great things in which the Lord will do before your eyes. And I started to think about it just for a while, and the Spirit of the Lord started to speak to me about standing and seeing, standing still, standing up. What I mean by that is slowing down to see and hear from God. It's a principle in the scripture. The title of the message is The Essential Position of Standing Still Before the Lord. A lot of words, but think about it for a moment. It is so essential for you and I to learn that there is a position that God wants us in. And oftentimes the position is not hustle. Oftentimes the position is not trying to talk our way out of it. Oftentimes the position is not worry. Oftentimes the position is not stress. Oftentimes the position is not doing anything. But just simply, essentially standing still. And what I mean by that is so that you can hear God. So you can see him, so you can find him, so you can feel him, so you can know him, so that you can trust him. You need to stand still. And we people, oftentimes, most of the times, you and me both, when there's pressure on us, man, we want to get the pressure off as fast as possible. So we do anything and everything to get out of that pressure when, in fact, the best thing that you could do oftentimes is the essential principle of standing still and waiting on the Lord. It means calm down. Take it easy, be at rest, take a deep breath. In this generation, chill. <laughs> That's the translation for 2012. Just chill, stop where you're at. Stop what you're doing, don't do anything. Get alone with God and talk to God and let God stand still. Here he was, he was explaining something that was coming their way that was gonna be a blessing to them and he says, listen, I can't tell you about it until you stand still. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you about the blessings that are gonna be in your life but I can't even get it across to you until you stand still. And sometimes God wants to talk to you about your home and your future, wants to talk to you about the, who you are, wants to talk to you about where he is at. And we're so all over the place, we need to learn how to, in this day and age to stand still and let God bless us and talk to us and hear from the Lord. It's an essential position. It's an essential process, settling down, being calm, relaxed, being at peace. 
Sum it all up is found in Colossians, third chapter, verse 15, but I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified Bible. I want you to catch this. Listen closely. Just go ahead and pop it up. It says, <clears throat> and let the peace, Amplified Bible. You know, there's different kinds of peace you can have. You can find peace in the world. It doesn't last, but it's momentary. It's there for a while. You know, you find, well, if I just had a husband, I'll find peace. And you live with him for a while, realize, man, there wasn't a whole lot of peace there. <laughs> if I just had a wife that would understand me, and then she starts to understand me, and then peace is gone after a while. There's all kinds of peace you can get in the world. But the peace that he's talking about, the peace that comes from the Lord. He says these words, let the peace, listen to this, soul harmony which comes, something in your resting inside of you, chilling out. Standing still, from Christ, rule. And Deborah's taught about it many times, let it rule. And then he says in parentheses, acts as an umpire continuously. In other words, you've seen an umpire who calls out the game. He's got stripes on, he's got a uniform on. He tells you when there's a foul. He tells you what you can't do and where you can go. He tells you when you cross the line. He tells you when you're doing things. He says, let this peace of God that's on the inside of you, inside of your soul, this peace of God, let it rule where you go and what you do and how you get there. And then he comes along deciding and setting with Finality, all questions that arise in your mind. You ever had a whole bunch of questions in your mind? I wonder if it's God. I wonder what God wants for me to do. If I only knew what God would have me to do. I've done this and I don't see any results. I wonder if God is even in it. Deciding and setting with finality. Finality means it's settled. All questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful, didn't say in turmoil, frustration, worried, anxiety, in that peaceful state, stand still so God can get across to you. It's an art. It's unique. Let me I say this to you. It's opposite of what we really feel, guys. In fact, let me just give you an insight. The Sabbath rest. The Sabbath rest isn't something that blesses God. It's something that blesses man. It was once a week to remind man to chill and put their heart on God. In other words, man would have kept on going, kept on going, churning, 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 because from the garden to this day, men's insecurity keeps them moving, trying to make themselves secure when insecurity only comes from God. So he says, now chill out, stand still in this position. Whew. It's a powerful understanding of the application of the principles of God. Tonight, why stillness is essential. Because it is. Why stillness is essential. I'm going to give you four things that you're found in Scripture. Is that okay? Four things why stillness. And by the way, can I say this to you? All the days of your life, you will probably work on this. Doesn't mean you get it perfect right off the bat because you hear me. Doesn't mean I'm doing it because I'm preaching it. I've got to work at it just like you have to work at it. You know, I can be anointed to preach something. Someone needs to tell you the truth. I'm not any more anointed to keep it than you are. I'm just anointed to preach it. So a lot of times people who preach it think they just got it when in fact they don't get it. And that's why preachers fail. Is anybody listening? So here we find why stillness is essential. Number one. Stillness is essential to hear. I got to hear from God. I got to know that I know that I know that I know that God has spoken and that God is directing. 
Because when I hear from God, then I know that I have the right direction. I will end up in the right place and I will be doing the right thing and I will get blessed. And I've said it a million times to you. I'll say it a million more times. God cannot bless you if you're out of sync with God because if he blesses you when you're out of sync with God, you'll stay out of sync with God thinking you're in sync with God and he can't bless you when you're out of sync with God. So I've got to live a certain kind of a life a certain way and I don't know how to do that. So God has to direct me and I need to hear from him. And if I don't, and I find myself a mess, you know, raising kids today has got to be an incredible thing. I, I, you know, my kids are growing up, and I'm blessed and honored and privileged that all of them are serving the Lord and preaching the gospel. That's a very rare thing. I'm a very, Deborah and I are very, very blessed. But raising children today, you have got to hear from God. You cannot operate in the wisdom of man. Wisdom of man will destroy your marriage, destroy your home, and cause your kids to go kiss somebody else that's weird. <laughs> you need the wisdom of God to raise kids today and how to apply the principles of the Lord. You need to hear from God. Here we find Moses, and he's talking to the children of Israel. He's brought them out of the promised land. They're concerned about where they're going and what they're doing. They're just like you. They're just like me. I, I, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not sure about how to live this life. I'm, I need to hear from God. And here we find Moses in Numbers, the ninth chapter. Go there with me. In Numbers, the ninth chapter, in verse number eight, he makes a statement that is interesting. And he looks at the children of Israel and he makes this statement. And he says to them, he says, stand still. Here we go again. All through the Bible, you're going to find stand still. God wants to do something. He wants to talk. He wants to reason with you. He wants to give you direction. He wants to show you something. Stand still that I may... Hear what the Lord will command concerning you. In other words, I can't hear from God if there's so much turmoil and rushing around going on in here. Some of you live lives that are just beat off of one post to the other. Fly around. You know what I'm talking about. You never even have a time for yourself. I'm talking about trusting the Lord enough to stand still. Get alone with God. And let God speak to you and hear his voice. Second thing we're going to look at tonight and why, if you will, stillness is essential. The second thing is this. Stillness is essential to see. I have got to see God's will and God's way. I can't just hear it. I have to, I'm one of those guys that are hard of hearing sometimes. I got to see it. I can hear something, but when I see it, I believe it. And sometimes I don't see God, but I do see his word. I was telling the staff this afternoon in a prayer meeting for you, and I also told a friend, my friend Federico Martinez, there he's, hi Federico. I said, there's something about some people. Some people you can talk to and the word of God goes in one ear and out the other. It goes in one ear and out the other. Then there are some people that you can talk to, it goes in one ear and it drops in their heart. And when it drops in their heart, that's the way it is. It doesn't go out. And you and I will live our life by how much we hear and drops in our heart. Not how much we hear and goes out the other side. Not how much we hear and can quote. But when it drops into the heart of man, it becomes part of that man. 
And over the years, I've seen the two types of people, the ones that hear that call themselves Christian, and it just goes in and goes out, and it has no importance to it at all. There has no uh, in, uh, excitement behind it at all. There's nothing there. There's nothing real. It's nothing uh, valuable to them. There's no respect. There's no reverence to what they hear. It's not a position of awe whatsoever. It just goes in and then goes out. But to the one where there's reverence and respect of what they hear and it drops in their heart, they have now seen God. And it goes past the hearing to the knowing. And that's when you really see the things of the Lord. Is anybody listening? And so we look at the scripture. We see this stand still again as we look at 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter. Here's Samuel once again saying these words, um, and he's making a statement. He says them to Saul. He says, as they were going down to the outskirts of a city here, Saul has no idea that he's going to be king over Israel. He's the first king. He's a mess of a king, but at this particular time of his life, he's pretty godly pretty unaware of anything. Samuel, who knows what's going on, has heard from God in a brilliant way, wants to talk to him, and he makes this statement. He tells Saul, he says to Saul, tell the servant to go on ahead of us. And he went on, but you stand here a while that I may announce, in the Old Testament it says, show you the word of God. In other words, he expressed something to him that he saw it. Have you ever had anybody tell you something and you just light up on the inside, you see it? In other words, it's not just something that's in your head. It's something that dropped down in the inside and you see it. It's part of you. You just know it. You have now seen something. It's announced to you. You heard it. You took it in. It's deposited in the heart. You have now seen what God would have you to see. We're talking about essentials and why stillness is essential. The first one is so that you can hear. The second one is so that you can see. You got to slow down, so do I. The third one is this. Stillness is essential for appreciation. If I do not appreciate God, I will learn to appreciate the world and bypass God and fail in my endeavor to have a relationship with God. Man, that's a mouthful. And for every one of us, we have got to, before God becomes really big in us, before God becomes really alive inside of us that changes us, he becomes so important and so valuable on the inside of us. Before that ever happens, there's got to be an appreciation level. And I think that's one of the things that I love about the rock. It's not going to get anything watered down in this place. You're going to, if, if you're in this place, you're going to grow to appreciate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What he did on that cross at Calvary. And when you appreciate who he is, man, you will not just skip through life as if he's something unimportant and treat him as common. You will appreciate him and you will uh, bring him into every situation. And when he comes into the situation, you have now heard and you have now seen and you will get soon. Appreciation. Job says it like this as God was speaking to Job. You know, Job's a mess. Really not such a mess. He's really an amazing person, actually. The mess has fallen upon him, and he stays pretty cool. Sometimes he's starting to doubt a little bit about things. At the end of Job, in 37th chapter of Job, verse 14, says this. God speaks to him and says, listen to this, O Job. Stand still. And consider the wonders of God. 
You will never think about how phenomenal your God is until you stand still. Get off the problem. Get out of the way. Get, let anxiety go. Stop worrying and catch yourself back on who he is. He is great. He is mighty. He is powerful. He loves you. Went to the cross for you. Died for you. Brought him into his family. He's got nothing else but the best for you. And the wonder of who he is comes when you stand still. Because, man, the world wants to churn you up so much that you never have time to appreciate who he is. And when you start to appreciate who he is, did you know the problems that you have and the pressures that come on you go away? The answer to every person's life in here is Jesus Christ. Listen to me. I, I don't care where you came from. I don't care what's ever happened to you. That's not the issue. I don't care if two drunken people got together in a bar for a one night stand and your mother was a whore and she gave birth to you. God got you here on this planet so you could get Jesus. And the, listen, listen, and the wonder of how great he is to take you someplace that your relatives never dreamt of. So it makes no difference what your background is. It makes no difference what you look like. It makes no difference about who you are. It makes no difference about how smart you are. It makes no difference whether you come from a godly family or not a godly family. What makes a difference is when you get into awe, wonder about who he is, and you do that when you slow down in life. Stop and stand there and spend time with him. Fourth thing. We hear, we see, we appreciate. I love this one. Stillness is essential. Here's number four, for personal strength. When I'm in wonder about who he is, I get stronger. When I'm in awe about his greatness and his love for me, I, I've now stood still and meditated. I have now heard from him. I have now seen him. I am now strengthening myself that no matter what's ahead of me on that road, that path, the things of life that seem so strange, isn't it weird how life sometimes turns out? It can be so screwed up. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But here's who straightens out a crooked road. His name is Jesus. And when you get into him, you personally get stronger. And all the devil, all the world, all the foul things that would try to stop you, nothing can stop you for greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And I get excited about this because, guys, I'm an old man who has lived it. And it works. I find it in 1 Samuel 30th chapter, here's David, he finally gets to a place where he encourages himself in the Lord. And his strength is there. For you to self- Encourage yourself, you're going to have to stand still. You're going to have to be in awe of the wonders of God. Appreciation, you're going to have to hear, you're going to have to see, which is easy when you stand still because your heart just goes back to him and off the problems, off the situation. And then that will strengthen you in the Lord so that whatever comes at you, nothing will knock you off your feet and you will keep on going forward. Listen to what I'm saying to you. It's so important that you see this. In the fourth chapter, in the fourth verse of Psalms, it says these words, be angry, do not sin, meditate with your heart on your bed, and be still. In other words, boy, that's when you're going to strengthen yourself. Get in that place of standing still, hearing from God, seeing God every day. Appreciate how great he is every day. And then strengthen yourself in him. And that's why God says, I've got something for you. I want to talk to you. I want to show you something. I want to show you your future. I want to speak to you about your destiny. I want you to understand in order for that to happen, you're going to have to get into a place of a great appreciation for me. 
And when you do, it'll strengthen you so all the stuff that comes at you will not knock you off your feet. Why? Because you stood still and you heard and you saw and you appreciate the great God that created the heavens and the earth. And what's ahead of you? What's ahead of you? But blessings of the Lord. Beyond that which you could ever imagine, beyond that which you could ever think is waiting for you. Marriages that really work. Happiness that's really filling. Joy that's overflowing. There's peace of mind and fulfillment in life. There's abundance in every area of your life waiting for you. But sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is stand still and wait for him to speak. Wait for him to show and appreciate who he is. Get into that relationship. Strengthen yourself in who he is and watch God do great things. Amen. Tonight, Pastor Jim is just telling you that God loves you. Take some time every day with God. Doesn't have to be a lot. Start off with five minutes. Just five minutes. Start off, then work your way to 10 and 12. And then don't do it by the watch. Then it becomes works. Do it by the heart and let the heart take you to the time that you need in order to hear, see, appreciate, and be strong. If God spoke to you today, come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Will you hear that? Let me talk to some of you real quick. Make sure you're all all right with God. Nothing could be worse than coming to the house of God hearing the word of the Lord, singing songs. Listen to me. Walking out of this place, your heart stops for some crazy reason. You're dead. And you open your eyes and you're in hell. Nothing could be worse than that. I want to make sure tonight that everybody that attends this church is going to heaven. You see, you can't get to heaven. You hear me now? You can't get to heaven because you think you're a Christian and you're going to make it because you think you're a Christian. That's not going to get you there. There's nowhere in the Bible that it say positive thinkers get to go to heaven. Did you know you're not going to get to heaven because you're really a good person? Most people think if they're good enough, they'll make it to heaven. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you get to go to heaven because you're good enough. You're not going to make it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you get to go to heaven because your mom and dad told you you were a Christian when you were a kid. And you weren't some other religion, so therefore you thought you were a Christian because your mom and dad told you you were a Christian. You're not going to make it. Did you know you're not going to make it to heaven because you joined the church and sang in some choir, got a church card that said you're a member? It's all fun and all great and all wonderful. I don't think it's great, but it won't get you to heaven. Did you know there's only one way to heaven? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That no man, listen to me now, that no man goes to the Father except by me. Jesus said those words himself. Jesus is either a liar or he was telling the truth. He says these words, no man goes to the Father except by me. You can't make it your way some well-meaning church committee's way. you got to make it his way. And he tells us exactly how to get to heaven in John 3rd chapter. He says these words, you must be born again. Bottom line, you must be born again. When I use the words born again, most people turn off and they say, I don't like born again people. And I understand, but do you ever wonder why you don't like born again people? Because Hollywood and movies and books and magazines have portrayed born again people like they are goofballs and idiots and ridiculous and crazy people. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. The truth is that born again people is simple. It means this words. And I'll tell you what it means so you know exactly what it's going to take for you to get to heaven. It means you've given God all of your heart. It means you've given God all of your life. You see, it's an all or nothing relationship with Jesus Christ. Always has been. Always will be. All or nothing. 
I'll prove it to you, last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation. Jesus is speaking and he says these words, when I come again, and you know he is, he says, I better find you hot or I better find you cold. Because if I find you lukewarm, if I find you lukewarm, I will vomit you from my mouth. Whoa. What did he really just say? People who call themselves Christians that are lukewarm are not real Christians at all. And when he comes, you're going to get vomited from the mouth of Jesus and not be allowed to go to heaven. And you don't want that. Let me define for you so there's no misunderstanding what lukewarm is. Lukewarm, little in, little out. Little up, little down, token prayer, occasional church attendance. You know, God is something in your life. Hey, I understand that. God is something, but he's not everything. And tell you the truth, until you make him everything, he'll never be something. You're not against God, but you're not wholehearted for God. That's lukewarm, my friend. And you're not going to make it. And somebody needs to love you enough. Somebody needs to respect you enough. Somebody needs to honor you enough to stop playing religious games and tell you just the truth. Just like it is. Here it is in your face. You must be born again. And the only way you can get born again is you. You have got to give God all of your heart. You have got to give God all of your life. Again, it's an all or nothing relationship. I can't make you do this. Nobody can. I wouldn't want to even try. It's your call. It's your choice. These words can't just go in one ear and out the other. These words that I speak have got to go in one ear and drop in your heart. And you need to give God what you have. Whether you think you're worthy or not isn't the issue. Whether you think you're good enough isn't the issue. Whether or not you say to yourself you're a sinner, God really wouldn't want you, that's a lie. God loves you and died for all the sinners, including me. He wants you just the way you are. He'll clean you up. But you've got to give your heart and life to Jesus first. Here we are in this safe, friendly place. We have laughed, we've clapped. You were great listening to the word, guys. You were great. Tonight, God spoke to you. You know it. We sang songs together. But don't leave this place tonight without giving God all of your heart. Don't leave this place tonight without giving God all of your life. Tonight is your night of salvation. I'm going to count to three. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to pop my hands together. I'm going to go like this. One, two, three. And I'll pop my hands. Bang! And you hear that sound. Bang! Your hand goes up. I'll see your hand go up. Who should raise your hand if you've been running from God instead of to God? I'm speaking to you. Listen to me now. If you've never given him all of your heart, I'm speaking to you. If you've never given him all of your life, I'm speaking to you. If you're one of those people that are not sure, make sure tonight is your night of salvation. God brought you here for this reason. And tonight is your night. You say, Pastor Jim, wait a minute. If I have to raise my hand, I'll be embarrassed. I'll feel funny. The people that came with me, well, they'll see me. People behind me will see me. I'll feel funny. I'll be embarrassed. Uh-huh, you might be. Get over it. It's better to be embarrassed for a moment in a safe place like this than to be in hell forever and ever because you care more about what people think instead of what God sees. Tonight is your night of salvation. All across this auditorium, back in the family rooms, wherever you're at, I'm, uh, uh, all across the world right now on live stream, wherever you're at, tonight is your night. God's watching you right where you're at. Get ready to put your hand up, put it right back down. I'm going to count to three, pop my hands together. Tonight is your night. Are you ready? Here it is. Your call, your choice, your time, your future. One, two, three. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. There's one, two, three, four. Thank you. Back here. Five. Thank you. Six. Thank you. Seven. Eight. Thank you. Back here. There's nine. There's ten. Thank you. There's eleven. God bless you. Anybody else? Real quick, there's another one they're pointing over on this side. There's 11, there's 12, thank you. There's 13, God bless you. Anybody else? Go for God, I didn't embarrass them. There's another one back over here in the family room. Is it family room? 13, oh, uh, oh, gotcha, right there. Okay, 13, 14, 15, thank you. Anybody else? 
Anybody else? Anybody else? There's 15 wise people. Where are you? 16, 17, 18. You're saying to yourself, I wonder if I should do this. Man, you should. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Remember, it's your call. You making a statement. And you're not making a statement before your friends next to you. You're making a statement about yourself before God. You don't want to make that statement, believe me. Anybody else that needs to get their hand up, stop messing with God and get your hand up. Anybody else? Anybody else? There's another one. There's 60. Was that 60? Anybody else? There's another one, 17. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, let's give the Lord a great big praise for about 17 wise people. <laughs> Hallelujah. All 17 of you, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible. Get a hold of your friend. If you need a friend, just say to them, come on, I'll go with you. You're sitting next to somebody, you feel uncomfortable, and they raise their hand. Just say, come on, friend, I'll go with you. And you come with them. Bring them down here. Bring a friend if you need to, but get your stuff. No one leaves during this period of time. Let's let all the people. If you're number 18, 19, 20, didn't get your hand up, it's not too late. Get your stuff. You come too. No one leaves. Let's welcome them as they come. Let's stand to our feet. You come right now. If you raise your hand, you come right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided Come on, go. to follow Jesus. No turning back. Come on, go. <laughs> no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Come on, Jesus. anybody else? Come, hurry, hurry. I have decided to follow Jesus. Well, thank God you guys have come. Put a big smile on your face. This is a good thing, not a bad thing. You're not going to die and go to hell. You're going to go to heaven. And that ought to be a time of good things, you know? Real quick, I want to introduce you. If you look to your left, see this guy over here? His name is Pastor Dave. He's a really good guy. He's going to do three things. Let me tell you what they are so you won't be afraid or think it's weird. First thing he's going to do is pray with you to invite Jesus into your heart. You need to invite Jesus in. He'll lead you in a prayer to do that. It's number one. Number two, he's going to give you, you'll love this, free stuff to take home. Free to find out now in that stuff, in that information, what to do next now that you're Christian. Well, what does God want from you? Just read that, tell you what to do. Third thing he's going to do is introduce you to a program we have called Spiritual Personal Trainers. Listen, you're giving your heart and your life to Jesus. But if you'll give this church one year, if you'll just give this church one year, I tell you and promise you this from the bottom of my heart, we will bust it for you. We will fight for you, work for you, pray for you, love you through the whole process. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Just one year and it'll change your life. At the end of one year, you'll be so blessed, so happy, so fulfilled, and so free that you'll tell all of your friends. But it's gonna cost you just one year and the rest of your life, you'll be blessed out of your socks. Only takes a few moments. The people you came with, they'll wait for you. I want you to make a left turn. Follow Pastor Dave right over this way. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise. 